Thank you. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. I mean, it really is an absolute honour to be invited to speak here. You know, I've been involved with the University of Wolverhampton for a couple of years now, and I really, really like being invited back. So thank you very much for that. You know, I've been involved with the University of Wolverhampton for a couple of years now, and I really, really like being invited back. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, I did have quite an exciting career as an athlete. Um, whilst I have a number of accomplishments and accolades to my name that I'm very, very proud of, they don't define me, you know, they don't truly paint a picture of who I really am. So let's have a little look at that question. Who am I? Well, I was an athlete. When I tell people that I'm retired at the grand old age of 30, I do get some funny looks. Um, but it was an amazing facet of my life. My sports archery, I took it up on my 15th birthday and three years later made the Great Britain team. I jumped straight in as world number one and hung on to that position for my entire international career. I won two consecutive Paralympic gold medals, the first in Beijing 2008, and then again in London 2012. I won five world championship titles and made history when I represented England at the Commonwealth Games in Delhi, taking the gold medal in the team event. So now I class myself more as an entrepreneur. I set up my first business in 2012, a speaking and training company. I wanted to use my expertise, my experience to help others. And I do a lot of work helping students deal with exam nerves, championing equality and diversity. And also, I really like working with people to develop a performance mindset. I've also set up another company, co-founded an inclusive sports organisation where we create a level playing field so people of all abilities and disabilities can take part in sport together. So that's really, really fun as well. More recently, I've embarked on a very thrilling adventure of becoming an author. So I've self-published two children's books and I've got a very exciting project in the pipeline. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed with that. Success is something that's always fascinated me for as long as I can remember. I've always had big dreams for the future. And whilst I haven't always known what that success would look like, I always knew that whatever vocation I ended up in, I was going to be really good at it. Failure was not an option. And I think this is true for everybody, really. We all strive for success. Nobody sets out on their life's journey desperately hoping to become a failure. You know, we all want to succeed in some shape or form. And my answer to that was to research success. I wanted to know what it was and how I became it. And I learned lots of things when I researched success. I learned that success is different for all of us. The world would be a very boring place if we all wanted to be athletes, scientists or engineers. So really, you have to decide what success means to you. You've got to come up with your own definition. There's no point putting a plan in place to actually get there if you don't know what success means to you. So looking at it from that point of view, I find that some people know exactly what they want out of life and figuring this out is quite easy, but others find it hard. You know, with so many different options out there, it can be quite difficult to figure out what success means to you. And that's really what I want to explore today. I want to look at the concept of success and drill into it and share my understanding, my insight with you. 
I think a good place to start is actually to look backwards and look back at the choices that you made. Look back at all those paths that converge and lead you to where you are right now. You know, we, we make lots of choices, we make sacrifices, the opportunities that you jump at, the plans that you stick to and those that you abandon or adapt. There are the skills that you learn, there are the people that supported you, and there are the steps that you take to make sure you get heard. I think it's really, really important to actually look back, to reflect, to celebrate how far you've come, to look at the lessons that you've learned, and it's important to analyze your choices because I firmly believe that success is a choice. I think that we are masters of our own fate, and I think that the ability to succeed or fail lies with you. Now, of course, I'm not naive enough to think that the playing field isn't that level and the same for everybody, or that the path to success is the same. We're all dealt different cards, we all come in different shapes and sizes with different wants, needs and desires and we all have different talents and abilities. And I believe if we work with what we've got, if we persist, if we pursue and if we refuse to give in, then we are all capable of achieving great things. And this was a mentality that I was fortunate enough to have instilled in me by my parents. So I didn't come from a place of privilege, but I did come from a place of love and support. My parents wanted the best for me and they encouraged, inspired, supported, and gave me the proverbial boot up the backside when I needed it. They told me I could be whatever I wanted to be, do whatever I wanted to do, if I worked hard enough. They also told me there was no such thing as can't. Now, I have many talents, but music is not one of them. And I don't know if you guys remember playing the recorder at primary school. <laughs> Do you remember that? Horrible things. I was absolutely awful at it. And I remember getting really frustrated one day I stamped my foot, I threw my recorder across the lounge and I shouted, I can't do it. My mum picked it up and said, no such thing as can't, come on, we'll both learn how to play. And I got there in the end, if you consider a tuneless rendition of Little Donkey at the School Christmas Play a success, but I still did it. When I look back, and reflect on my success, actually this mentality forms the backbone of a lot of it. Whenever I was in a situation that was really tough and I thought, I can't do this, my immediate response was to go, yes I can, there's no such thing as can't, I just need to find another way round. I just need to find another way to do it. So even though this might require a little bit of thinking out the box, getting the right people around you, or changing the master plan, nothing is impossible. And I'm really, really grateful for my parents for instilling that in me, because I know not everybody has the good fortune to be passed those messages on when they're very young. But I do believe that this is something that we can all learn to do. Resilience is another quality that's very important for success. You know, life doesn't always go to plan, and at some point or other, it will throw something up. You know, it will throw a curveball in your way. Having the ability to not just bounce back from this, but to return even stronger than when you started is hard, but it is something that we all need to learn to do. Success isn't easy. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen by accident. There are no shortcuts or miracle solutions. The path there is littered with failures 
unsuccessful attempts and missed opportunities. And I really learned about resilience as a teenager when I became disabled. I've got something called complex regional pain syndrome. It's a neurological condition that causes chronic pain in both my feet all the time. And developing this as a teenager, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't particularly pleasant. At an age where you're figuring out who you are and what you want to do with the rest of your life, I had this additional problem thrown into the mix. It was hard, you know, it was something I couldn't prepare for. I couldn't stop it from happening and it had a huge impact on my life. My existence revolved around hospital appointment after hospital appointment, never-ending pain, and a deep-seated worry that my life would never be the same again. Prior to this, I'd been super active. I loved sport, I loved trying any new sport, being outdoors, it was great fun. Um, my disability took that away from me. What I realised at this point was that whilst you can't control what life throws at you, you can control your response to it. So rather than focusing on all the things that I lost, I focused on what I had left. And this was very empowering. I started to look around for a sport that I could do, one that didn't involve lots of running around and walking. And I figured I was down to either archery or swimming. Playing with bows and arrows seemed way cooler than bobbing up and down in a pool. So my 15th birthday, my dad and I did a beginner's course at a local club. And I took the first step on a journey that changed my life forever. So failure is a big part of success, whatever form that comes in. You know, and again, it all comes down to mentality. It comes down to how you deal with that failure, how you deal with curveballs, with challenges, with difficulties. Failure is something that athletes actually know quite a lot about because it's a vocation that we tend to fail far more than you actually succeed, or certainly for the vast majority of athletes, that's true. And failure is important to learn from but it's also important to learn how to bounce back from it. That, that's the important bit. And uh, uh, managing to keep that positive mentality. And I always found through failure, I learned so much more than I ever did from success. I could put things into practice to make it better for next time. And actually it was really motivating. You know, that was my, my fuel, my motivation to make sure that that didn't happen again. So whilst it is okay when things go wrong, it's fine to get frustrated and angry and perhaps a bit emotional about it, but then look at your response. How can I control that? Put those emotions to bed and start focusing on real solutions. Resilience is hugely important, as I said. And I, I count this as one of the, uh, the cornerstone qualities for success. Another one that I think is very important is self-awareness. And I want to talk to you about self-awareness with an innovative approach. So innovation is a word that we hear quite frequently in today's very fast-paced world you know, with a landscape that's constantly evolving, constantly changing, we have to think up new dynamic ways to keep up or stay ahead. Sport, again, is one of those worlds where athletes are trying to see who's the fastest, the strongest, the most resilient. So innovation is absolutely critical. Most athletes, I noticed, when trying to be innovative, focused on the technical elements. They spent longer on the training range, they modified their technique, they used technological advances to try and see if they could improve their accuracy or shave another millisecond off their time. 
I didn't. I took a different approach, an innovative approach. I looked at myself. My theory was that in order to get the most out of me as an athlete, I had to get the most out of me as a person. And it worked. I spent a lot of time getting to know myself, developing myself as a human being, and it really did pay dividends when it came to my performance levels. I noticed that I consistently outperformed my competitors, I improved at a much quicker rate, and I achieved things that had never been done before. I think this approach applies to every field, not just sport. At the end of the day, if you are not operating at peak performance and efficiency, then how can you expect things like technology, new practices, or more resources to help you improve and get to the next level? You can't, right? So working on yourself, taking that innovative approach is super important. Self-awareness is a huge part of success. And I, I find that when it comes to relationships, friendships, even business meetings, we spend a lot of time getting to know the other person, but we very rarely spend the same amount of time and effort on ourselves. Now, I, I, I think we, as a rule, we only know ourselves on a very basic level only. You know, we know things like our likes and our dislikes, our strengths and our weaknesses, our goals and our fears. But what drives you? What is it that makes you tick? Do you know which values are important to you? How do you respond in stressful, high-pressure situations? And what about your thought process? Do you know how your thought process affects your emotional state and then affects your behavior? Do you know why you fail and why you succeed? And I think looking at those questions is really, really helpful. Self-awareness is about taking a long look at yourself without judgment and asking those questions. It's about thinking about the way you think. It's about focusing on your emotions and looking at how these impact your behavior. It's the foundation for success. Because ultimately, if you want to be successful and you need to make changes, how can you make the right changes if you don't know what needs changing in the first place? Again, you can't. So self-awareness is super, super important. A big part of that self-awareness, I find, and something that, that I've always found super useful, is to look at your driving values, your core values. You know, what is it that defines you? What highlights you as a person and makes you stand out? And it's really important to understand these because once you understand your why, it encourages you to make change. It's your reason to keep going when things get tough. And it encourages you to choose or find an activity or career that you find worthwhile. So driving values are really, really important. They're like your own personal roadmap. They help you know that you're making the right decisions, that you're on the right track, and they act as a code of conduct so that your behaviors start to mirror your belief system. So driving values are super important. And here are my top 10 driving values. I always think it's really useful to write down a list of all the values that appeal to you and then whittle it down to the top 10. I think once you've done this, once you understand this, it makes making decisions much easier. You know, when it comes to a decision, a difficult one, or even quite a mundane decision, if you ask yourself which option is most in line with my driving values, it's much easier to make sure you're on the right track, you're making the right decision. 
So I, I find that looking at values uh, has always been very, very important. And it's also important to note that they do change at different times in your life. So if I were to do this exercise as an athlete, I would have probably come up with a completely different set of values. Some of them would have been the same, but I think I might have things like control, ambition, recognition, and assertiveness in there as well. If self-awareness is the foundation to success, for me, self-confidence is the building blocks. And this is a, a quality that I think is probably one of the most important ones for success. You have to trust yourself to know that you're capable of achieving. You've got to believe in yourself and your abilities. And what I've found is that self-belief, or rather the lack of it, is something that a lot of people struggle with. And it really tells in their progression when you're watching them move through life. I want to share a story with you about how I discovered self-confidence was so important. And it happened because my self-confidence completely deserted me. And where better for that to happen than the Paralympic Games in Beijing 2008. So at that event, I breezed into the semi-finals. Two matches separated me from that gold medal I so desperately wanted to win. The night before those two matches, I had a complete mental meltdown. I started to think, what if? I want this so badly, but what if I can't do it? What if my best isn't good enough? What if I let myself down? What if I let everybody back home down? I went from this one thought, this one what if, it spiralled out of control until I genuinely believed that my dream of becoming Paralympic champion was impossible. Luckily, I checked my emails. My equipment manager sent me a message and he told me I could shoot scores in my sleep that my competitors could only ever dream about. The fact that somebody else believed in me that much gave me the boost I needed. And next day, I got up, I went out there, I managed two very convincing wins to come away with the gold medal out there in Beijing, which was an amazing, amazing achievement. And I'm there, I'm stood on the top of the podium, I was given my medal, I was given a nice big bunch of flowers, all the cameras are pointing at me, and I had a light bulb moment. I realised if I'd have gone out there convinced I was going to lose, I would have done. I didn't, I managed to turn it around at the very last moment, but the fact that we can actually think ourselves into failure was the most important lesson I ever learned. And I knew that moving forwards, if I wanted to keep winning, if I wanted to keep getting better, I had to believe in myself and my ability no matter what. So when I went away from Beijing, I went home, I started to research confidence. Very similar to my, my research and success. What is it and how do I become it? And I learned that actually confidence is more important than your natural ability and talent when it comes to winning sporting events. It's more important than your academic ability when it comes to taking exams. Confidence is the thing that gets you through the interview process, gets you pay rises, gets you promotions. Confidence is super, super important. I also noticed that it was something that had followed me through my whole life. People had told me I needed to be more confident. My parents, my teachers, my coaches, be more confident, they said, but nobody ever told me what I had to do to become more confident. It was as if by telling me to be more confident, I'd somehow miraculously develop it, and I didn't. So looking at confidence, watching other confident people and seeing what they did, I noticed that elite athletes expect to succeed instead of trying not to fail. And this is a really important distinction. It's also quite a difficult thing to practice. 
And I wanted to get to that ability where I expected to succeed. I went out there, I believed in my ability no matter what. So what I started to do was pay attention to my achievements, start actually recognizing when I'd done something good instead of focusing on all the negatives. I notice it's actually quite common with archers. They can shoot an amazing round and all they will do is focus on the three bad arrows in the middle. So I switched my mindset. I started focusing on the good things, even if things hadn't quite gone to plan, but I'd made progress or I'd stuck to my goals and I'd achieved what I wanted to do. I focused on that instead of concentrating on the negatives. Uh, and this had such a huge impact and um, profound impact on my success levels. In fact, the more confident I became, the more successful I became. I started making the able-bodied team regularly and going to London 2012, know, a home games, a games on our own soil, uh, and getting to represent my, my country there was just incredible. And I didn't doubt myself there. I believed in myself. I made it through to the finals. And in a really tense match, it came down to the last arrow. I was also shooting against my teammate. And I knew that over the long rounds, I was going to be miles ahead. But over the short head-to-head -head match play rounds, you know, she could put together a few good arrows. So I knew it was going to be a hard match. Came down to the last arrow. So whoever got that arrow closest to the middle took gold, the other person settled for silver. And I shot first, my arrow soared towards the target, into the yellow, but it wasn't dead center. So that meant that if my opponent got her arrow closer, she took gold, I settled for silver. And honestly, she drew a bow back. It felt like she was up there forever, finally released it, and the arrow soared towards the target up into the seven in the red, which meant I'd done it. Uh, and whilst that was an amazing achievement, that last arrow purely came down to that, that confidence, that belief, who wanted it more, who was expecting to succeed rather than trying not to fail. So as I say, that, that self-confidence is an ability, a quality that I've used to great effect in sport, in education, in business, and it is absolutely essential for success. The last quality that I want to talk about is kindness and I don't know if you noticed it there on my, my values but that was right on the top and I think kindness is a very important part of success. I probably wouldn't have said this as an athlete because sport isn't a very kind environment or certainly it wasn't when I was involved. You know, it was very black and white, it was very mercenary, the culture the environment. It was all about winning. No ifs, no buts, no excuses. Very, very harsh. It was often quite lonely and it could sometimes be very cruel as well. When I shifted from that environment of sport and I moved into another sphere, into the, the SME world, I discovered terminology like synergy, networking, collaboration and learned all about the power of kindness. And it was amazing, I loved it. Now, sport, business, you know, those they, two often equated very similarly in that it's often seen as an uphill struggle, it's quite ruthless, where qualities like determination, tenacity, ruthlessness are um, prized. Kindness often doesn't get a mention and I think that it's really, really important to actually focus on. We're noticing now a big shift away from that quite domineering, transactional leadership. You know, managers are expected to lead. And um, we're seeing that they're actually being expected to deliver results, but also be approachable, engaged and caring. So this doesn't mean that the world's turning into a fluffy, cuddly playground filled with fairies, unicorns and dipped in chocolate. 
you know, people should still be held to a high standard and they should be held accountable for falling below that. We should still expect to deliver and produce results. But I always think that, you know, if a leader is kind and honest and fair, that critical reception actually comes across much better. I also think that kindness isn't as altruistic as it first appears. You know, what I've found is that being kind to people actually ends up getting a good result later down the line. Uh, and I do love this, this quote, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So all about the emotional bank account. And, and this is something that I, I now value very highly and I, I do think has an important place in success. Uh, it's something, as I said, I never thought I'd probably ever hear myself saying as an athlete because that was not an environment where it was, it was, it was prized or prioritised. I do find that actually working and my involvement with the University of Wolverhampton you know, so far has been absolutely amazing and I've been involved with project that's all about change uh, and good causes. So it's actually really nice to see that value uh, being used here. Thank you very much. Thank you.